why you must pursue the easiest medical schools to get into. Hey, BMO Nation, welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Bronza, and I'm joined by my colleague, Mang. Hi, everyone. Now, we have nothing to sell you. It's just pure strategies and tips so everyone has equal access to education, of course. Now, in case you've never watched or listened to uh, any of these before, they are completely unscripted, so there's no effects of that nature, visual or audio. It's just pure content. We have 10 minutes to tackle a new topic each week. And this week's topic is why you must pursue the easiest medical schools to get into. All right, 10 minutes on the clock here. Uh, Meg, before we get into this, I think we need to clarify what we mean by easiest. Uh, We're not trying to degrade or offend anyone by that uh, wording because we know that it's not easy by any means to get into medical schools or any professional schools by that means. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of organization and time that goes into it, including money that goes into it all. So when it comes to easiest, what we're really referencing here are how you pair up with the school. You know, when you're doing your research prior to applying to any school, of course, you're looking at the acceptance rates. You're looking to, or at least you should be, looking into, you know, your chances. You're looking into GPA. You're looking into the MCAT. What did that program, uh, what do they normally accept? What was the last cycle's uh, statistics if that's provided online? Typically, it's provided on MSAR. If it's directly provided on the program website, even better because they're usually, uh, you know, the latest updates in terms of, you know, where the averages are uh, for the students that get ex- that got accepted last year versus where the median range is. You know, when we say easiest here, we're really saying which school, you know, you are highly competitive in, you know, anything above the 85th percentile. Great. These are schools that you don't want to neglect here. Um, You know, a lot of students are, you know, they have overarching goals and it's great. You should have that when it comes to anything in life. But when it comes to schools of your entire list of medical schools that you're hoping to apply to is comprised of schools that you have uh, a semi good chance to get into or maybe an average chance uh, that's you know that's obviously going to decrease the probability um, of you you know potentially getting accepted because you know it's you know it's a bit challenging so you really have to make sure that you excel so you want to make sure you do not neglect those schools that you definitely um, hit the mark and if not over hit the mark really in this case, you know, you're, you, you have a great, you know, the, maybe the median range is 509 in the MCAT and you're like, well, I got a 514. Amazing, right? That's competitive. Great. Don't overlook that school simply because you're saying, I want just Ivy League schools. I just, I want, you know, all these top-notch schools at the, you have to remember the end goal for you at this point is to become a doctor and these avenues will still get you to that uh, end goal. Uh, Meng, when it comes to, um, I guess, the strategy uh, for school selection, uh, what we call school selection, you know, selecting the schools, what are things that students need to consider to really ensure that they are not um, undervaluing or overlooking some of these programs that could still be a fit for them? Hmm. I think you've already kind of touched on some of these, Um, just in terms of making sure your scores are the most competitive. You've already touched on the MCAT, for example, making sure that, you know, you're in the 80th or even 90th percentile that you're, if your scores are in that range, then definitely have some of those schools on your list as considerations. Um, Same thing with GPA. Right. If your overall GPA or your science GPA is in the 90th percentile compared to the other applicants, again, uh, definitely consider some of those schools as well. Uh, If you have a lot of experience that that school is specifically looking for, you know, some of these schools are specifically looking for people with work experience and a lot of applicants don't have work experience because maybe you know, the majority of applicants are applying from undergrad, right? They're, they're um, completing their undergrad degrees. That's, that's the majority of people who are applying. But if you are someone who has work experience, maybe specifically in the medical field, uh, and, and that makes you an extremely competitive candidate at a school that is looking for people where most of the matriculants have that kind of experience, again, don't overlook that school. And I wanted to just 
say one more thing about you know why this is a really good strategy is because I think a lot of people feel have the misconception that you know a school for which the range the GPA or uh, MCAT range is a little lower where I'm very competitive that's not a good school I want to go to a school where I'm less competitive that means that's a better medical school and you know that's really not a fair comparison <laughs> um, because a lot of these medical programs may be a little bit newer, right? So they're accepting a wider range of candidates, but maybe that means they have really amazing uh, technologies that they have uh, available to their students in the program. And when we talk to students who are in different kinds of programs, um, you know, there's not really that big of a difference in terms of the quality of education and also in terms of the opportunities that you have afterwards, right? The opportunities that you have to get into great residency programs is not dependent on which medical school you came from, but it's dependent on what you do during medical school. If you're doing really well during medical school um, and you've been able to, you know, explore the different types of specializations that you're interested in, and that's a match for the residency programs that you want to get into, then that's what's going to increase your chances of getting into that residency program. So we have seen people go from, um, you know, the, these easiest medical schools to get into going into residency programs that are extremely, extremely competitive um, because they've shown themselves, they proved themselves um, through their performance during medical school. So, so yeah, just thinking about your current chances as well as your future opportunities, um, there's really no major disadvantage to, to applying to these schools. Absolutely. A, a lot of what you said there I could unpack, but I know we don't have the luxury of time here, <laughs> Meng. But I do want to stress that when it comes to uh, the term easy, yes, it's very subjective. We know by any means with what Meng just meant, it's not easy. It's still hard work. So do not uh, misconstrued what we're saying with like, oh, a shortcut. There's never shortcuts to medical school. There's mm -hmm. never shortcuts. And I mean, there shouldn't be any shortcuts to anything when it comes to your career. Now, in terms of ensuring that you increase your probability, you know, some of you might not have competitive GPA scores or MCAT scores. So you really want to uh, consider the schools that have slightly lower um, acceptance rates. Now that does not guarantee you uh, a seat into that program. Of course, there's a lot of different components and also the candidate of pool that you're competing with is going to, you know, you have to consider those individuals too. You know, they might also be applying to those schools, but this at least increases your chances of getting into medical school, which is what your end goal should be about at that point. Um, and I also do want to consider here that you know, when it comes to setting this foundation of applying to those schools, uh, you know, when it comes to your application component, you have to consider all the hard work that you're going to be putting into it. So there's a lot of time and money. So you want to make sure that you're realistic with your approach. So you're realistic with that school selection. That's our, our internal term that we refer to when strategizing and selecting the list of medical schools that you want to get into. So very, very important that you include those. So you must uh, apply to those easier schools, uh, ones that are either lower in terms of acceptance rates for averages that you can apply to, or you're highly competitive in even better uh, to secure that, you know, you could get into medical school at that point. And that does not mean that you shouldn't be applying to the schools that you're looking for. Also, it's just ensuring that you are being realistic about this because it's very competitive. And if you're spending time and money in one application cycle, you want to at least that you, uh, you want to know that you've at least increased your probability of getting, uh, you know, that interview, you know, getting into the, the process so you can get accepted. Uh, Meng, is there anything else that we can add here? We have a few more seconds to kind of highlight some key areas. Um, no, I think the point that you brought up about how invest, how much of an investment this is makes really drives home the point of like, you don't want to go through a whole cycle and not get into a school just because you only apply to the most competitive schools. It's really not worth it considering, you know, you've taken the MCAT, you spent the money, you spent the time, you've spent all that time um, writing your applications, primaries, secondaries, you spent all that time getting references, you know, with all that investment, 
really what you want to do is widen your net, make sure you get into one or two schools, and even have an option when it comes to which school you want to go to ultimately. Awesome. And, and that's actually time. So thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, then you can go ahead and share it with a friend. Subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. And please ask any questions that you might have in the comment section below. See you next time. Bye.